Praise God. All right, so let's look at the scripture. Everybody want to read. Look up. I pray the walls of Jericho fell down after being outside for seven days. Hallelujah. Now, listen. How many of us have heard about the walls of Jericho before? It's not one word. Can you see? Can you see it's plural? The walls of How many of us have heard the story before? How many of you remember the story we used to say? Sing it now. The song is true, but I would say it's incomplete. Listen, our teaching in this series, part six will show you, which is what we are doing today, why the, world of, the walls of Jericho fell down. Many times, since I've been in the faith, I've gone for praise services before, and they would say, shout, like the children of, God, of Israel shouted, and the walls of Jericho fell down flat. So what do we all do? We we'll shout! And there is nothing wrong with shouting. Because the Bible encourages us that when we are before the Lord, we should give praise the Lord with a loud shout. It's good. It's good to shout. However, there are secrets behind everything you see in the scripture. The word of God is not just a book of stories. Every model of sin you see in the scripture, there is a secret behind it. There is an inner walking. Praise the Lord. Listen, listen. The Bible said the Lord, He showed His ways unto Moses and His acts to who? How many of you know that scripture? How many of you have had it before? He showed His ways. You've never had it before. Oh my God. So look for that scripture for me. People are very hot in the scripture. Psalm 103, verse what? You can only be in my house and read the scripture. I can be a bottle of trouble while we are eating. And we, uh, hey, that scripture, I just remember that scripture. Where is it? Where is it? And I'll continue it. You have to look at it. That's how it is. Anything can turn to prayer or scripture in my house. People who are with that come around my house, who come around, around my house frequently, they know. We can be joking like this. And I'll just remember the scripture. And we start teaching from there two hours. Somebody say, That's See, Baba, in my phone, no. Yes, yeah, so. That's seven. Thank you. You see, she didn't miss it. Give me Psalm 103 verse 7. Ah, ah. Who kept him is on fire today. Praise God. Before I even said it, Kevin, God bless you. No, give me King James first. I want to show you something. Because you must learn. If you don't learn the word of God, you can never be a good Christian. See, everybody wants to read. Stop. That's too weak. Want to read. Now, this was speaking about God. He made known his ways to Moses, woman. But his acts, the things that he will see, the action, to who? To everybody, the children of Israel. So the children of Israel will see his acts. They will see big things happening. But do they know the inner working? They don't know the inner working. They don't know what. Moses did. They don't know his prayers. They don't know his fasting. They don't know his tears to bring about those things. They just see those things happening. Do you know that the children of Israel did not know what it took Moses to part the Red Sea? They didn't know. Because if you read that place we read last week, you will notice Moses' conversation with God even before they got to the place. He was before the Lord praying, traveling, and God was saying, see, what is going to happen? Just between the two of them, what is going to happen is when I when we are going to, I'm going to lead you to the Red Sea. He knew where they were going. He said, I'm going to lead you to the Red Sea. Go and read it. Before they got there, God already told Moses, I will lead you to the Red Sea with the children of Israel. I am going to harden the heart of Pharaoh. I will harden the heart of Pharaoh. He will come after you. And you will part the Red Sea. Moses already had that conversation with God. Go and look at your scripture. He had that conversation complete. So when they go to the Red Sea and the Egyptians were coming, was he afraid? He was not afraid. He knew that, ah, 
This was exactly what Baba said was going to happen. So the only thing that I don't do, I've never done before is to part the Red Sea. The <laughs> cuckoo said I will part it. So Lord, he said, lift up the rod. The Red Sea parted. What did Moses see? The ways, the inner working. Am I making sense? To you? The inner working. He knew. Listen. When Moses, let me jump to the end again. When Moses was about to hand over the mantle, who did he hand over to? Where are the Bible scholars? Talk to me. Joshua. El Elisha. Joshua. Oh, Joshua. Oh, I thought you said Elisha or oh, Goliath. It was not Goliath. He handed over to Joshua. Why did he hand over to Joshua? Because Joshua was the closest person to him. Go and read the scriptures. Every time Moses went on top of the mountain, Joshua would be at the foot of the mountain. He will not go home. Go and read the scriptures. Praise the Lord. He will not go home. Others will go home. Others will go back to the camp and be enjoying and sleeping. Joshua will not go anywhere. So if Moses was there 40 days and 40 nights, Joshua would be at the, at the foot of the mountain. How many days? 40 days and 40 nights. When they set up the tabernacle, Moses will go to the tabernacle. The glory of God will come down. He will worship the Lord. He will talk to the Lord. Great and marvelous things will happen. Once he leaves, that boy, Joshua, will be there. The Bible said Joshua never left the tent of meeting. He will clean it. He will arrange it. The glory would have departed. But he was so everything Moses was doing inside, he was the one that saw it. He was the one that understood the inner working. He was the one that understood how to hold on to the hands of God. Praise the Lord. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. So when it was time to hand over, Moses could not hand over to one brother that is far away, just looking at him. No. He had to hand over to the one that knows how to seek the face of God. Who has learned from Moses? Listen. Many people are looking for spiritual impartation, spiritual power, anointing today, but they are not led to walk with the person that God has placed over them. You cannot receive anything until you learn how to walk under clearly with the person that God has set above you so that you will learn the inner working. Because once you become the leader and they put you in front, it's not just for show. You must know how what to do. Am I making sense to you? You must know what to do. That was why, and we're going to look deeply into the story of Joshua also today to see exploits. Because you see, the crumbling of the walls of Jericho that we're going to examine today was a feat that God achieved through that man called Joshua. It was because Joshua understood the inner workings. He knew what to do. The Bible said God made known his ways to Moses and his acts to who? To the children of Israel. Listen, what you are learning in this series are the ways of God. Am I making sense? That also, the day you need to see the hand of God, you will know what to do. That's what I say amen to them. Say a good amen to them. Do you know what I've discovered? That nowadays, a lot of times, once people are faced with trouble, they don't know what to do. And they have been in church 10 years, 15 years, they don't know what to do. They'll say, let pastor come. When pastor comes, we will not know what to do. The devil can finish you before pastor comes. What God wants is for you to be able to handle the enemy, even if it is in the middle of the night. A man of God, several years ago, said something. He, was, he, he, he had this secretary who, was, who used to be his disciple, a lady. He had discipled her and she had grown very well in faith. But she was then working at that time as his secretary. So he went out to do something. Before he came back, they brought a young man who had run mad. He had lost his mind. They brought the man to the man of God. But the man of God had gone out. So the moment they brought the boy in, and they said, you know, the boy was still manifesting and everything. They now go to the second, they said, ah, where is daddy? We want daddy to pray for this boy, he has lost his mind. The secretary stood up and said, daddy is not around now, daddy went out to do something. He said, give me the boy. They said, ah, you small girl. He said, give, give, give the boy to me. Ah. They were looking, what's going on? The way daddy will do it, the words that daddy will say. She placed her hand and said, you foul demon. Of the sanity, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. She spoke the way. She said, I know how daddy says it. I know how daddy talks. 
I wrote the scripture that he would have quoted in this situation because she has worked closely with him. He, so he rebuked the spirit because God is no respecter of persons. He respects his word. And because she spoke the right word and she's also a child of God, the boy manifested. He appeared. The spirit left. The boy just calmed down. And the boy sat. A few minutes after, the pastor came. As daddy walked in, they said, Daddy, we came to see. He said, I hope there is no problem. They said, Actually, there was a big problem, but there is no problem anymore. Let somebody see me. What was the difference between that secretary and an ordinary secretary? Impartation. She is not just his impartation, yes, but then she she understood. Said this is how these things are done. A lot of us we don't know how to get things done. That's why the Bible is speaking in the book of Proverbs. He says, The labor of a fool wearies all, for he does not know how to get to the city. Your labor will not be the labor of a fool. Amen. Did he say a good amen to them? Now listen, God made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. Now go back to, to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30. The Bible said that wall of Jericho that we are worn out about, the walls of Jericho, the Bible said what brought it down? Look at this scripture. Everybody, one, two, three. So, what's going on? This is a vibrant church, isn't it? Are we vibrant people? You can even answer. The people on this side, help them with coffee or something, they need to wake up. Are we vibrant people? Good. So, we should read like vibrant people. So, everybody want to read. I want you to analyze this scripture for yourself. I'm teaching you. So, what was the real action here? The walls of Jericho fell down. Is that not the real thing that happened? That was the action. But what brought it down? Look at that scripture. Don't just say faith because we are teaching faith. Think about it. What do you think brought it down from that scripture? Look at it closely. I've been teaching you all this by faith now. Six on this, the sixth Sunday. Look, I want you to analyze that scripture. Yeah? You are going, you are getting closer. Yes, they obeyed God's instruction, but what brought it down? Because I said you say this, everybody has run away. By faith. So what brought it down? It was their faith that they put into action. How? We are still going to look at the details of this story. Hallelujah. So, the Bible said, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. The walls of Jericho did not fall down by the noise or the shouting. If you read the story, the story will not even talk about faith. But by the time we get to the New Testament, the New Testament began to show us the inner working. That actually, people only saw that the walls of Jericho fell down. But these people, there was something happening. There was an inner working. That inner working was what brought the result. Listen, if you do not understand the inner workings of faith, you cannot see results as a child of God. I'm telling you the truth. And that's why for the past six hundred days, I'm here sweating, 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 teaching, so that you will understand the inner workings. One day you will need it. All. Hallelujah. One day you will need it. I'm going to use Emmanuel as an example. He's seated here. He told me the story of when his boss was attacked by arm robbers. And they grabbed all of them. He said, some people tried to escape. The robbers went after them, beat, brought them back and beat them very well. But even in the midst of that, he said something rose up in him. That you know what? I'm still going to try. And he jumped up from there and jumped into the bush and kept running. And those people were shooting. And he kept running. And as he was running, the only person that could have protected him was who? Was God. He could have stayed there. Up till now, I don't think you ever found out what happened to the rest of the people. Listen, the matters of faith in the life of a believer is crucial. It must be something that is a part of your life. The Bible said, 
The walls of Jericho did not fall down because the walls were weak or because the people shouted so loudly. No, it was because they were weak. All their noise, all the moving around, they, those things were acts of faith. So, what is faith? Can you give me the definition? Everybody wants to go. So, everybody, the definition of faith, want to go. Hallelujah. Your confidence in God's ability that God has power. God's promises. When he says, I will do this for you, do you believe that he's able to do it? And God's instructions. When he says, go there, I will do this when you get there. Are you confident enough? Even when everything is saying what he said to you will not happen. Are you confident enough to stand up, to start walking? Even when it seems like you are taking a leap in the dark. Praise the Lord. That's faith. Faith has nothing to do with your feeling. You can be afraid and you are walking in faith. Fear can be all around you. And you say, you know what? I will take action. That action that you are taking is called faith. Praise the Lord. So let's look at the story of this world of Jericho. Let's go to the book of Joshua, chapter 6, from verse 1. Joshua, chapter 6, we are going to read from verse 1. Listen to me, friends. Like I told you, Joshua was the one that received the mantle from Moses. Because he had worked with the Lord. He had worked with uh, Moses closely. And he had also learned how to work with God. That was why the mantle came upon him. The anointing that was on Moses came also on, on him. Praise the Lord. And this matter of the walls of Jericho was one of the notable miracles that God performed through Joshua because he knew what to do. Praise the Lord. Joshua had learned while going with Moses that he must follow instructions. Am I correct? He had learned that, look, this God that we are serving is the God that gives instructions. And when he gives the instructions, you must do what? Talk to me. You must obey. You must follow him. You must follow him. Let's look at the story. So the children of Israel, they were on their way to the promised land. So they got to the place, a city called Jericho. But now the story begins. Now Jericho was what? Strongly fortified because of the Israelites. No one was living. No one was entry. So, they were supposed to pass through Jericho. Am I correct? Yes. To get to the promised land. Their plan actually was not, to, was not to live in Jericho. They wanted to pass through. But the people of Jericho had had the marvelous things that God has done to all the people they had met on their way. So, they became afraid. But their country also, in their favor, was a fortified city. The city was fortified, which means they had built a large wall around it. These are very powerful stone walls. They, these are not fences. Walls. Those walls, people live inside them. They are like buildings. But around the city. Is that okay? So when they heard that the children of Israel were coming, he said the country was fortified. Why? Because of who? Because of the Israelites. No one was leaving. No one was entering. They said, lock everywhere. We won't allow them to pass. Do you understand what I'm saying? They were afraid that if they passed, they might destroy them. Anyways, everywhere was fortified. They said, you are not going anywhere. We will not allow you to enter this place. And the children of Israel needed to pass through the place to get to the promised land. And now, let me give you a bit of historical background. You see, Jericho at this time, they had just concluded their harvest. Do you understand? So they had harvested all their crops into the city. They can stay in that city for one year without going anywhere. The children of Israel didn't have that much time. They had done like an irrigation system. Go and read about this city of Jericho. Smart people, they, they said they were very smart people. They were not ordinary people. They had done an irrigation system that brought water from the river outside into the city. So they would not lack water. So they locked everywhere and said, These Israelites, they are not going to pass. Let's go. The Lord said to Joshua, Look, see where God started. Look, I have handed Jericho, his king, 
and is fighting men over to you. God always starts from the end. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why when God wants to send you somewhere to go and do some work for him, he will say, I'm giving you the land. You will say, which one? Share this one that nobody knows me. Or I'm even talking, nobody's listening. And God said, I say, I've given everyone to you. See how God started with it. He started with the end. He started from the end. He said, I've handed this city over to you. Listen, that's why in your life, the things that you are craving, God has handed it over to you already. Amen. Somebody missed a good place to see him. He said, I've handed Jericho, its king, and its fighting men over to you. Don't forget, the children of Israel did not even know how they were going to enter the place. And yet, God said, I've given the people to you. I've given everything to you. Let's keep going. We're going to move fast. He said, now look at this. March around the city with all the men of war. Cycling the city one time. Do this for six days. Go to verse 4. How seven priests carry seven rams horns. No, go back to three. I want to establish something. Everybody look at this. I've been teaching for six Sundays, so I'm going to now be asking you questions. Now, so, this was God speaking. March around the city with all the men of war, circling the city one time. Do this for six days. What is this? Talk to me. This was the instruction. This was what God said they should do. They didn't know how the world was going to fall down. They didn't know how they were going to enter the city. All they had was an instruction. The instruction from the Lord, just march around the city once a day. For how long? For six days. That's four. So that's the instruction. You will, I want you to be able to link it to that book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 30. Because many times when we read it, we say, ah, maybe because they just believe in their heart. It's more than that. When it comes to the subject of faith, once you believe it in your heart, you must take action. Praise the Lord. If you do not act, you don't have faith. So, see an extension of the instructions. It says, how seven priests carry seven rams on. Seven rams on trumpets in front of the ark. So, they were carrying the ark of covenant. But on the seventh day, march around the city seven times while the priests blow the trumpet. So, first of all, he said, march around the city how many times in a day? Once. Once a day. For how many days? Six days. Now, on the seventh day, march around how many times? Seven times. Is the instructions clear? God will not give you an instruction that is not clear. This is how detailed God is. And he said, look, they will carry the Ark of Covenant. When they carry the Ark of Covenant, they will be going ahead. The priest will be blowing the trumpets. Let somebody say amen. Let's keep going. When there is a prolonged blast of the horn and you hear a sound, how all the people do what? Give a mighty shout. Then the city wall will collapse. And the people will advance. Each man straight ahead. Is it clear what God wants to do? March around the city once every day for six days. On the seventh day, march around how many times? Seven times. Then, begin to blow the trumpet. Prolong the blowing of the trumpet. Then let the people do what? Shout. As the people shout, what did God say will happen to the walls? The walls will collapse. Then you will go in and take the city. So let's go. So, Joshua, son of Nun, summoned the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of Covenant. And have seven priests carry seven trumpets in front of the ark of the Lord. Was that what God said? Yes. God. He said to the people, move forward, march around the city, and have the armed troops go ahead of the ark of the Lord. After Joshua had spoken to the people, seven priests carrying seven trumpets before the Lord moved towards, moved forward, and blew the trumpet. The ark of the Lord's covenant followed them. While the trumpets were blowing, the armed troops went in front of the priest, who blew the trumpet, and the rear guard went behind the ark. But Joshua had commanded the people, do not shout or let your voice be heard. Don't let one word come out of your mouth. 
until the time I say shout. Then you are to shout. Let's go. So the ark of the Lord was carried around the city, circling it once. They returned to the camp and spent the night there. Does this still align with God's instruction? Yes, it aligns. Joshua got up early the next morning. The priest took the ark of the Lord. And the seven priests carrying seven trumpets marched in front of the ark of the Lord. While the trumpets were blowing, the armed troops went in front of them. And the real guard went behind the ark of the Lord. On the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. And did this for how many days? For six days. Let's paint the picture. The city was surrounded by walls. Am I correct? And in the city of Jericho, there were also warriors and the people were there. So when the children of Israel came, I'm sure they could see them through their windows. Am I correct? So if you are one of the people in Jericho, what would you expect the children of Israel to do? Since they were going to, they have come to run, overrun your city, what do you think they would do? They will prepare for battle, they start fighting, or they start shooting, or they start uh, trying to uh, break the gates down. So imagine, as you are now waiting the first day, you see them marching around the fence. They will be following them. They are marching them. They are just moving around the fence. Let's see if they will do something. In case they try to come in so that we can shoot them from the roof. And they march around. And after marching around, they just see them, they depart. They go to their camp. How will you feel? Yeah? Say, these people don't know what they are doing. They, 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 they really don't know what they are doing. They say, well, it's the first day. Maybe there is a strategy. Maybe they want to come in the night. Maybe they have just come to see what the walls look like. So the second day, they did the same. Without saying a word, they go back to camp. The third day, after a while, what do you think the children of, the people of Jericho will be doing? They will be laughing. They will say, man, they are afraid. They are looking at the strength of our walls. They don't know what to do. Listen, the instructions of the Lord to us are always like that in the eyes of other people. Can you hear me? Many times when God gives you an instruction to other people, you are what? You are foolish. People will look at you and say, foolish man. He says God told him to go and do it. God told him to go, foolish man. Ah. You didn't know when you had God speaking. Don't be quick to call any child of God foolish. Who is acting on an instruction? The problem might just be that you don't know how to receive instructions. Many believers don't know how to receive instructions from the Lord. You must learn how to receive instructions so that you will know what to do. And many times, when God tells you to do something, in the eyes of others, you are a foolish one. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 10. I want to show you when it comes to the instructions of the law, in the sight of others, most of the time, what you are doing will appear foolish. Give me verse 11, not this one. Verse 11. 12. 12. Give me 12. 7. I want to establish. Chapter 2, verse 12. Okay, go to 13. I'm, I'm looking for that verse. 14. Okay, thank you, Chief 14. Go. Look at this scripture. Talking about what happens. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Most of the time, how people you as a child of God, when you are obeying divine instruction. When God gives you an instruction to go and do something, or to go to a particular place, or to do a particular thing, most of the time people will say you are, talk to me, they will say you are foolish. But it is not strange. He said, but the natural mind does not welcome what comes from God's spirit. Because what? It is foolishness to him. 
He is not able to know it since he's evaluated spiritually. These ones are to be. Give me King James. King James will help me today. King James. Mm. No. I want who has NIV? Who has NIV? Yeah, come, 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 come to the front. All right, read another bit for us. Verse 14. Yes. The man, the man without, without the spirit does not accept the things that come from him. For the man without the spirit does, does not, not accept, accept the, things the things that what? Come from the spirit of God. That comes from the spirit of God, yes. For they are foolishness to him. For they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them. He cannot what? This is that word I'm looking for. He cannot understand them. Because they are spiritually discerned. Because they are spiritually discerned, you can only know them by the Spirit. Listen, the Bible says, for the natural mind does not receive the things that come from the Spirit of God. You that have received that instruction, who has given you the instruction? God, the Spirit of God. He has told you, go and do this. Go and do that. Go to this place or go to that place. The natural man or a natural man does not understand it. You said the spirit told me not to. Do you understand what I'm saying? He cannot understand it. Why? They are foolishness to him. By his own logic, what you are doing is foolish. Praise the Lord. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually designed. I will give you an example. Some years ago, this was in the year 2000 2003. I remember clearly. Year 2003. I got a job offer from an oil company. Oil and gas. You know what they say? Oil company. How will you feel? They say, an oil company is offering you a job. You know, you'd be like, hey, I don't have a. That's how we say. It. I don't, hey, I don't blow. Uh, now I enter. This was a good oil company. Foreign. An international oil company. They just came into Nigeria. They were, they were in Porta Cut at that time. And they were looking to employ people in my field. And someone reached out to me and said, Oh, are you interested? I said, Are you asking me if I'm interested? I applied. And they told me, Come to Porta Cut for an interview. They paid my flight ticket to and fro. How many organizations would do that? So I went there. I did the interview. The interview was super. Everything was wonderful. I finished. I came back to Lagos. Then they called me after a few days. They said, congratulations. You have been, it was the financial controller that called me. I was still a young accountant at that time. He said, congratulations. And we are pleased to inform you that you have been offered a, a position in our company, blah, blah, blah. What will you do if you get that kind of information? I did the same thing. I first of all danced in the house. I closed the door. I danced before the Lord. I said, me, oil and gas. Hey, yeah. I danced, danced, danced. I sent messages to some of my friends. I said, I don't have to. I don't have money. But I closed I said, I don't. Oil and gas. So your friend has not entered oil and gas. You know, to my close friend, I sent messages to them. And I, I was too excited. I was, my mother said, because I was still living with my friends, they said, she said, come and have your lunch. I can't remember which one at that time. I said, no, you know, I'm just full. You know, you can be full of joy that you will not be able to eat. I could not eat. She said, eat your bread. I said, ah, you know, I'm, I, I don't want to eat. And so, so night came. I was about to sleep. I was saying, Father, I thank you for what you did to me. Thank you for the Lord. You I was worshiping the Lord. Then the Lord came. Mm. It can be tough when you hear God. The Lord visited me. I knew his presence was coming into the room. I said, what's going on? As he entered the room, I said, Lord, I thank you. He said, do not take the job. What? Is this not what we have been fasting and praying about? He said, do not take the job. I said, Lord, why? He didn't tell me. He didn't give me an answer. He said, but do not take the job. All my worship. You know when your worship eh, disappears from your mouth? I came back. I said, no. <laughs> what? What is my best? 
Why is it that all the good things you always tell me not to take? He didn't answer me. Just do not take the job. Now, the following morning, I was supposed to go to the Ale- to the Lagos office to pick up the letter. They said the letter was already waiting for me at the Lagos office. Multinational. So I said, it's the Lord. Uh, I, I, the night is not very long, though. If you want to really, I was only going to think, God, oh, ah, ah, Lord, change your mind. This is good job. I was great. The Lord did not even answer me. Say, I have told you what I have told you. So I, I struggled and struggled and struggled. By morning, mm, I said, God does not. I knew clearly that God didn't want me to take the job. But it was, I could not understand why God would not want me to take oil and gas job. Ah! That everybody is watching and praying about. Anyways, so by the following morning, I didn't go to the Lagos office to collect the letter. So they called me from the Lagos office. They also called me again from Otaka. Said, is that Mr. Aliba? I said, yes. Said, we are waiting for you in our office to come and pick up your letter. I said, eh, you see, you know I could not tell them God said. So I said, you see, uh, as I was thinking, as I was not going, I said, I didn't even know what to say. I was just saying all sorts of rubbish. So, you know, eventually, for three weeks, they were calling me almost every day. What is going on? I said, you see, after so I said, you see, I'm just thinking that, you know, Anyways, I didn't take it. Now, when we held the interview, I met a friend of mine also there. And because they wanted a number of people, they offered me and also offered him. So he had gone, he had picked up his letter. Then he called me and said, what's going on? Have you picked up your own letter? I said, you know, I don't think I want to take that. What's wrong with you? I said, nothing is wrong with me. I'm just taking a decision not to take it. Anyways, he pressurized me. I said, leave me alone. So he took the job. He left the job he was doing here. Because the job was to be in Port Harcourt. So he left, went to Port Harcourt. I was still in Lagos. How be it? At that time, I didn't have a job. I was jobless. Can you imagine? I left my former job. So I was jobless. And yet, God told me not to take the money that I saw. Follow me. Close. So the episode closed. I was very unhappy with the instruction the Lord gave me. But I, I followed it. Five months after, one day I was working on the street. And I saw this friend of mine again. Ah! Oh boy, what are you doing now? We all each other. How are you? How is everything? So I hear him. I said, ah, ah, oil and gas. You be a big boy, oh. Eh? With, I still didn't have a job for five months after. The, the, the ways of God can be interesting. I said, ah, man, you will be plenty money now. Then he looked at me and said, oh, for which plenty money? I said, oh, you want to be pretending? I know what they offered you. I you know they offered me to. He said the company folded up after two months. Because all the wells they tried to drill, they were dry wells. So they lost a lot of money. And when after losing all those, to drill an oil well is very expensive. So they now met empty holes. There was no oil in all the fields allocated to them. They had invested a lot of money. So I think by the third, three months, three or four months after they gave, they gave me the offer and I refused it, they discovered those uh, dry, dry wells and the air office shut down the Nigerian operations and they sacked everybody to go. The ways of God are past searching out. Learn to hear instructions and learn to follow it. Later, the Lord then opened another door for me, which was much better, which then became a springboard to bigger things. I did not realize that God had planned my career in his own way. Am I making sense to you? A child of God must learn to receive instructions, to know what God is saying. And when God gives you an instruction, most of the time, the people around you will say you are foolish. For the natural man does not understand the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him. Neither can he know them for their spiritually desire. I told you the story a few weeks ago of a man that got told, leave your job and go and start printing work. I told you that story in the city of Illori. He started the the, he, he rented a shop, set up everything, and he would, be, he would go there every day with zeal. And for the first six months, 
Nobody even knocked on the door to say we want to do this kind of painting. And he had left the door. He had a family to feed. This was like 20 years, 19, 18 or 20 years ago. He had left everything. So he would sit down there with his sideboard. He would clean the sideboard. Something, something kind of printing. Do you get down this one, that one? Nobody branch. So one day, when it was exactly six months, he got to his shop. When he got to the shop, he had the sliding door. So he entered, closed the sliding door, and started crying. And as of when you see an adult man with wife and children crying, you don't see what that was the real. He was like, oh, God, what is my offense? Is he an offense to be your child? Is he an offense to obey your instruction? I was earning a good salary. You told me to leave it. Now look at me six months. Not one cent. And he was there wailing in the room. While he was wailing, did you realize that some people, about three of them, they were knocking on the door, on the sliding door from outside. He didn't know. So after a while, he felt he had something. He thought maybe it's all those people that sell granite. That bring granite to him in the morning to say, okay, you go jump granite, you know? So he felt, okay, let's go and see them. As he opened the sliding door, he saw these were well groomed people who were standing well. Ah, he said, I'm coming. He quickly went to one corner, cleaned his face because the tears were still in his eyes. He cleaned his face and said, You are welcome. You are welcome, sir. How may I help you? He said, um, Actually, we saw your signboard and this uh, about this kind of printing that you do. And this is exactly what we are looking for. We are looking for someone who will do this kind of printing for us. Ah, he said, I know how to do it. That's what I do. In fact, I'm an expert. And he said, actually, um, we are from the United Nations office. True life. We are from the United Nations office. And uh, we just set up our office here because we want to run a particular project. And we need this kind of printing. Are you sure you are able to do it? He said, ah, yes, I'm able to do it. Are you willing to go with us to our office? So that we can discuss the terms. He said, What am I doing? Is it this one that is only going to not sell us that knock on my door? That I, I, in fact, I'm following you now. Should we check or we will take a car? Anyway, long story short, they took him to the office. That same day, when as he was about to leave the office, they gave him a contract of 15 million naira. The instructions of God do not always yield results immediately. Am I making sense to you? At first, it will seem like you are foolish. People will laugh at you. People will mock you. But the instructions of God will yield results at the end of the day. So, as they were encompassing, can you please take us back to the book of Joshua, chapter, um, chapter 6? Okay, no, Joshua, chapter 6. Go back to that verse where we start. So, as they were going around, they had gone around the walls. How many times? Six times. Once per day. Nothing had happened. Do you know that even some of the people, they would have been looking at jo uh, Joshua. 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 What is this nonsense we are doing? They would just be disgraceful. What kind of, you know, Joshua is leading the way. They'll be talking about, and you know the children of Israel were very cantankerous. They'll be talking about this. This guy is just, this is how we'll be embarrassing somebody. We just, we, we just embarrassing someone. We are going, going. We'll go around and say, don't talk. No. Instead of us to see how we will break down this wall, learn to follow your leader. If he's a man of God that God has put over you. All this grumbling, they will land you in trouble. And I will show you one of these days how grumbling landed the children of Israel in trouble. They, they met many of them, so many of them paid with their lives because they grumbled against God. And they were saying, I'm sure they were saying amongst themselves, this Joshua does not even know what he's doing, Jared, and we are just going, and going around. For what? Oh, nonsense. On the second day, okay, so they did this for how many days? For six days. Let's go. Early on the seventh day, they started at dawn and marched around the city how many times? Seven times in the same way. Exactly what God told them to do. That was the only day they marched around the city seven times. They followed the instruction closely. Go on. After the seventh time, the priests blew the trumpets and Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has done what? Giving you the city. Let's go. 
But the city and everything in it are set apart to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab, the prostitute, and everyone with her in the house will live. Because she hid the men with sex. I don't want to talk about this one. It's another teaching. Let's go. Next verse. I want to see something. Go. On. 20. Okay, so. He says, So the people shouted, and the trumpet sounded. When they had the blast of the trumpet, the people gave what? A great shout. And what happened to the world? And the wall collapsed. The people advanced into the city. Each man straight ahead. And they did what? They captured the city. Was that what God said will happen? Yes! God said if you follow these instructions, it might seem foolish marching around the world. And they try to cause an earthquake. I don't know. But God said march around the world. Sit once for the first six days. On the seventh day, do it seven times. The world will collapse. They obeyed the instructions. That act of obedience is called what? Talk to me, talk to me. So faith has nothing to do with your feeling. Am I making sense to you? Faith has nothing to do with your feeling. Faith has everything to do with obedience to instructions. In this case, they received the instructions and they obeyed. That is faith. You can be afraid and walk in faith. You can be confused and walk in faith. You might not even be sure of what the outcome will be and walk in faith. Because your walk in faith is the action you are taking. God says go, you are going. God says walk around the fence, you walk around the fence. Hallelujah. Amen. Say a good amen. amen. So listen friends, you must learn first how to receive instructions from the Lord. Secondly, how to obey. Once you obey the instructions of the Lord, regardless of how you feel, you are walking in faith. And once you walk in faith, you will see results. That's why this happened in the Old Testament. That's why, now take us back to Hebrews 11.30. That's why Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30, the chronicles of faith began to tell us what the real inner working was. He was saying, look, the walls of Jericho did not fall down because of the noise. Or was it the noise that pulled it down? It was not the noise. You can stay here and shout all you want. This building will not come down. Am I making sense to you? Even the fence, that tiny fence outside. Eh? If 10 of Guki go there and they start shouting, will it fall down? It will fall down. If 10 of God who are strong as he is, go there and they face the wall and they shout, will the wall fall down? No. But the walls of Jericho, which were buildings actually, fell down. Why? By faith. It was their faith, their confidence in God that made it happen. I've ended my teaching for today. What's my admonition? Have faith in God. Be confident in God's ability. I remind you again, Romans chapter 4 verse 21. Abraham was fully persuaded that God has power to do what he has promised to do. Listen to me as we round up today. Do not be afraid of the threats of the enemy. Whatever God has promised to do in your life, he will do it. Did I hear somebody say amen? Whatever God has promised to do in your life, he will do it all. All you need to do is to have faith. Just be confident. Just believe him. Just trust him. And you will be amazed that he will do it. Listen to me, friends. Many times, many times, when God wants to do something in your life, and he speaks to you, it will seem as if it's not going to happen. Am I making sense to you? It will seem as if it's not going to happen. Everything we say is not going to happen. Am I making sense to you? But if you keep believing, it will happen. I told you the story when I was rounding up my service here about the what was that award? The, the chairman's award, the state award. God spoke to me, said you will get it. And he gave me a scripture. And I rejoiced. 
On the first day of the personal parade, we were supposed to do four days. I don't know if they still do four days. Four days. So the Monday, I got to the place where we were practicing for the parade. One of my friends, my couple friends, met me at the gate. And he said, Doku, have you seen? He said, Doku, the list of those that will receive awards is out. I said, hey, okay. He said, like the devil. He said, your name is not there. Did I ask him? He said, your name is not there. Like, don't even start to rejoice. Your name is not there. Ah. I said, okay. You don't need to argue with anybody. I know the word God spoke to me. I know the instructions that he gave me. He said, your name is not there. I said, okay. There is no argument. I can't argue with you. It's okay. He said, will you go and see Mr. So 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 or Mrs. So so so? I said, no. I'm not going to see anybody. I went back. After the parade, I went back to the place where I was going to rest. I brought out the word of God that God gave me, the scripture. I meditated on it. Read it out to myself about 50 times again. And I went to sleep. The following day, I went to the parade ground late. The moment I got there, this boy showed up again. As he was coming, I said, this devil is coming again. Oh God, what is this? Then send this guy to me. But this time around, when he came, he said, oh, did you go to and see Mrs. So -so -so? I said, no. He said, because now I've seen the list again. Your name is on it. I smiled. I said, praise God. He said, ah, but tell me the truth. Did you go to see her? I said, no. He didn't understand the inner working. There is an inner working to receiving great things from God. There is an inner working to seeing the hand of God in your life. It, just, it does not just happen. Listen, I am telling you the truth. This is what God has sent me to do. Great things in the lives of people does not just happen. There is an inner working. One of those inner workings is faith. If you do not learn to work in faith, you will not be able to receive much from the Lord. Am I making sense to you? If you do not learn to work in faith, obeying the instructions of God, following the promises of God, trusting His ability, trusting His instructions, trusting His promises, you will not receive much from the Lord. And those are the inner workings that will bring the hand of God mightily upon your heart. Listen, as I round up, you have to choose where you want to be. Do you want to be like Moses, that God showed his ways? Or you want to be like the children of Israel, that only saw action? It is the one that sees his way, that knows his ways, that can create that action as many times as he wants it. Am I making sense? Can you see this fan? The fan blowing you. You are a user. You can only see the action. If this fan breaks down, there is nothing you can do. But talk to engineers who knows how it works. If it breaks down, what will they do? They will settle on it, work on it, it will work again. But you and I that are illiterate in that dimension, we will only be looking at it because we only know the acts. We don't know the ways. Listen, friends. Today, I want you to go home with that understanding that there are the inner workings of God. There are the inner secrets, deep secrets of the things of God. Those who work with God will know those secrets and they will be able to see results consistently in their lives. If you do not work with God, you will not know a secret, you will not see consistent results in your life. That will not be your story in Jesus' name. Amen. So what's my final admonition? Have faith in God. Begin to learn the word of God. Begin to learn the ways of God. So that in every area of your life, you can see his hand, you can see his power, you can see his manifestation. Listen to me, friends. If you do not learn this thing, it cannot just happen. It will not just jump on you. Let somebody say that. I want you to pray this morning, just for a few minutes. I finished my message for the day. Lord, open me up. Let the channels of my spirit open up. Lord, let the channels of my spirit open up so that I can walk in faith. 